Hello, so today I'm finally proper World Cup stuff begins, so I'm going to be predicting Scotland's lineup. Um, now this is not a preview for the game yet, I will do previews. Um, what games will I be previewing? Quickly I'll just tell you. Um, obviously the France-New Zealand, the first one. I'll do England-Argentina. I'll do Scotland-South Africa. And if I have time, I'll do Wales-Fiji from that first week. After that, I'll just have to wait and see what I've got time-wise. Yeah. Um, so, have a look. So this is not a preview for the game. This is just what I think Scotland's lineup should be. Um, based at looking at the recent games and form and all that. Um, I wanted to get this out early-ish because I suspect the team will be out on Thursday, Friday. So I wanted to get it in now. It's, it's, it's Sunday today, isn't it? Jeez, it's is early. I'm, I've got in my head it's Monday, Tuesday. Huh? But anyway, I'll, I'll still continue. Um, yeah, so, without further ado, here is my Scotland team to face South Africa, my predicted. One, Schumann. Two, Turner. Three, Xander Fagerson. I think those three kind of talk themselves. Definitely the best um, front row in Scotland at the minute. Um, now, does it have the... I think it does. I think this first thing does initially have the beef anyway to keep up with the South Africans. Um, at least the starters, maybe, you know, the bomb squad's another thing, but I think those three have enough to keep up physically with the South African front row, um, and I think that's all Scotland need to do. Um, I will cover what I, how I would play it, um, basically how I'd play it. Don't try and out-physical them. Um, I'll tell you later, I've got a 5-3 split on the bench, so don't try and out-physical them. Try and be physical enough that you can make sure that they're not 100% dominant. Try and just be physical enough to kind of, maybe not completely stop them, but to slow them down quite a bit and go more for the backs, because I think Scotland have better backs than South Africa. I really do. Um, yeah, so, Schumann, Turner, Xander Fagerson. Uh, I know people will be worried about Xander Fagerson with his um, discipline and stuff, but I think he'll be completely fine. Um, second rows, I've gone with Richie Gray and Grant Gilchrist. Solid starts. Uh, Gilchrist himself has started nearly every game for Scotland. Um, Line-out wizard. I'd, I'd probably say he's probably one of the best. Line-out um, second rows probably in the world at the minute. And Richie Gray, I mean, he's like, what, six foot eight? something like that you know he's 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 massive so you know just to we need it you need every advantage you can get in the set piece against the box so i would play richie gray just for the height going into the back row here's where things get a little bit interesting like obviously it's six jamie ritchie captain of the team no no issues there um number seven i have gone with rory dodge over hamish watson I think over the last couple of games he's proved that he's probably in slightly better form at the minute. And, um, you know, his ability to win that ball over the rock, his tackle weight, his um, metres per, you know, metres gained after the tackle is amazing. Um, as similar, um, I've got Dempsey at eight instead of Fagerson. Um... I think for similar reasons, um, Fagerson. Now, I wasn't always convinced about Dempsey until kind of these warm-ups, I will say. Um, Fagerson himself is a great tackle machine. He always puts in great stats. He always gets good numbers of tackles. But I think that Dempsey's just a lot more physical. His ability just to run and, again, make those metres after the tackle. You need every inch of physicality you can get against the box, and I think that he is slightly better in that. Initially, anyway, as I said, I, I am, or I was more than I am now, worried about his discipline. I felt like, you know, I'm, I think back to the New Zealand game um, in the autumn of last year, where Scotland actually looked like they were on top. They were something like nine, eight, nine points ahead with like 20 minutes to go. 
and were looking pretty dominant until Dempsey did something stupid, got himself yellow carded, and from there New Zealand just came back and went on to win the game, which I feel like, yeah, it's a wasted opportunity for Scotland there. Um, now, I think he has improved a lot. I don't, th I hope that he doesn't do the same thing again because that New Zealand game, although it would have been nice to beat them, it doesn't really mean anything. With this World Cup, we're going to need to beat the box or the Irish. I think we should give both a blooming well good goal. Um, so that's the forwards. So Schumann, Turner, Sander Fagers and Richie Gray, Grant Gilchrist, Rick, Jamie Ritchie, Rory Dodge and Jack Dempsey. Now into the backs, number nine, Ben White. Um, I've been impressed with him. Um, definitely upset Ali Price recently. Um, his speed of ball, his link ups with between the forwards and backs is great. Um, his ability to pick off around the side of rucks and stuff and just squeeze those extra meters is great. Uh, he just needs to watch himself getting isolated against the box. If you get yourself isolated, instant turnover basically. So you need he needs to make sure that if he does do these pick and goes, I'm not saying he d shouldn't do them because they they can work. And if they work, it's great. But if he needs to make sure he's got people there, get over quickly, um, or else the box will just turn it over. They're really good in the breakdowns. Number 10. <laughs> Do we need to say? Obviously, it's Finn Russell. I would argue he's the best 10 in the world at the minute. The whole pivotal point of Scotland's attack. He is who I think can lead Scotland to win this game. I'm not saying they're going to win this game. Again, this is not a preview. But... I think that Finn Russell is the key. If Finn Russell can play um, the way he's been playing, he will give the box problems. That's all I'll say. I'll go into it more tactically for the preview of the game, which will probably be out Friday. Maybe not Friday, because I'm... Maybe Thursday. Depending on the teams, I'd hope Thursday. South Africa always release their team really early. Their, their team will be out in a couple of days, but Scotland... Depends when they release their lineup, up if it's Saturday or Thursday. Um, but yeah, Finn Russell, definitely. Number 11, again, kind of speaks for himself, Duhan van der Merwe. Um, now, I know he has um, defensive issues, but I don't think you can look past him for his attacking threat. Um, last time they played South Africa, they couldn't handle him, to be honest. They couldn't. He was making massive runs, he was doing everything really well, even when they played the Lions, you know, they, they couldn't really handle him, and I think, and I hope that he can keep that up, um, he just needs to watch himself cutting in, you know, I think he just needs to run straight, um, and yeah, 12 and 13, again, the centre partnership that's been there, brilliant in the Six Nations, I felt like they were holding back slightly more in these summer tests, the warm-up games, I hope that's just not to give too much away, because the, what they were doing in the Six Nations was brilliant. That's um, Sione Two, Fuller Two, and Hugh Jones. Um, a pair of them together, those little dinks, those little flicks, putting one or the other through the gap, it's just incredible. And now, as I said, I felt like more often in the summer tour, they weren't doing those little flicks, little dinks. They were more just taking it themselves and hitting it up hard, which might work, but against the box, you've got a better chance of trying to, you know, not just, don't run straight to the box. <laughs> what I'm trying to say, you're not going to do much if you just run head first into the box. And many have tried, many have failed. I think you do need to manipulate them. And I think, you know, if Finn Russell and these two are on board, that's the key there. If these three can easily, well not easily, but they, they have the ability to manipulate the box defence and hopefully give Scotland an advantage through that. Going on, number 14. Darcy Graham, does it speak for, again, speaks for itself, brilliant, great try scorer, pretty solid defensively, um, can easily wiggle through situations easily, one of the best finishers in the world, I would argue one of the best overall wingers in the world at the minute, um, and it's very rare that I say that about more than about one or two players for Scotland, and I've said that for a good four or five, and I think that shows how good Scotland are at the minute, but I'm not taking away how tough this actually is for them number 15 now it was a bit of a toss up I've gone with Blair Kinghorn although I know the risks that he
he comes with. Um, but again, his playmaking ability is really, really good. If he can act as kind of a second playmate or be about a fourth or fifth playmaker, there's that many of them. He can also help manipulate the box defence, gives them another option to watch on either his runs or his kicks or his things. I just think he needs to work on his kicking game a little bit. I think a few too many times his kicks were just a little bit to nowhere, you know. He'd get it in his own 22 and he wouldn't do what Russell or before him Hogg would do, where they'd look up, look at the space and blast it, I think. And, you know, fairly often get the ball out of play and get a line out in the other team's half, maybe even a 50-22. Whereas I think too many times in the summer, it was just kind of taking it and just blasting it back, not really looking at the space. Well, I think if he fixes that, he should definitely be here. Um, yeah, so that's the that's the starting. So Schumann, Turner, Xander Fagerson, Richie Gray, Grant Gilchrist, Jamie Ritchie, Roy Dodge, Jack Dempsey, Ben White, Finn Russell, Duane van der Merwe, Sione Tupelotto, Hugh Jones, Darcy Graham and Blair Kinghorn. Now quickly go over the bench. Um, 16, I've gone with Dave Cherry. It was a smash up between him and Ashton. I just feel like to go with Cherry, um, I just, I, I don't know. I just think Cherry's a slightly better option than Ash, Ash Minute. minute. Um, 17, Sutherland. Um, yeah, he's, he's good, really good. Um, decent off the bench, always puts in some hard tackles. Solid in the scrums. And now he's no bomb squad, but he can compete. And I think this is the same as three Scotland bench front row. They're not the bomb squad, but I think that they can compete. And that's all I want the forwards to do. Um, number 18, the scrum father, WP Nile. Um, recently come out and said that he doesn't think he's going to retire after this World Cup at like the age of 38 or something which I think is great. He's a great player, amazing in the scrums. Long may his reign continue, is all I shall say for that one. Um, 19, I've gone with Sam Skinner. Um, again, decent line-out option. Uh, can cover both second and back row, which is great. Um, again, showed his worth in the summer tests. Number 20, I've gone with Matt Fagerson. Um, I out. I think that he's unlucky to be dropped to the bench, but Dempsey's physicality, I think, is more suited to this game. But him to come on, say, with, like, 20 minutes left, with his tackling thing, you know, he can just put in a really strong defence. You know, if Scotland do manage to steal the lead by a couple of points towards the end, his defensive work rate will help them hold those couple of points. Um, 21, I've got with George Horn. Um, over Ali Price, yes, because I think that really since the Lions to it, Ali Price has depleted quite a lot. Um, I think George Horn's been excellent, especially coming off the bench as a real live wire. Um, you know, you watch that France, the Scotland-France game in France in the summer tour, and you just, you know, the last, the Scotland comeback, you, you watch, and that's posh. He played a big part in that. You know, you watch his dink for that beautiful stain try where he ran round off the pitch, caught it and went in the corner to draw Scotland level. Which, you know, he's pivotal. Uh, it'll be great if, again, when the box start tiring, if these rumours of the 7-1 split on the bench are true, which I know people aren't happy about, I don't particularly care. Um, I think it gives them a disadvantage in the backs. Um, you know, if they get more than one back injury, they need to play a forward in the backs, which... Is always is put Scotland at huge disadvantage. Not Scotland, South Africa put Scotland at huge advantage. And um, so I'm not really bothered about the six, seven one split. I know there's people saying it's ruining rugby. It's South Africa. They're one of the best teams in the world. If they want to do that, let them do it. That's my opinion on it. Um, but Horn brings that energy late on. You know, if when the box not if when the box start to tire. Um, twenty two, Chris Harris. Now, attacking-wise, I'm not the biggest fan of him, but his defensive work rate is amazing. I love, I quite like him off the bench because of that defensive work rate. Um, you know, what was it? I know I'm going up back a couple of years, but that when Scotland won in France, 
which I think was the last time France lost away from home, uh, at home, I believe. I could be wrong there. But you're going back to lockdown. It was a good few years ago, but he single-handedly stopped so many French tries. It was actually unreal, and I think that he still does have that. Um, now, again, I'm not 100% happy with his attacking play, but off the bench, again, to steady the ship if Scotland do have a couple-point lead. Uh, I'm not saying they will do, but, you know, it's a massive possibility, let's be honest. Um, I know the South Africans won't want to hear this, but it is a possibility. Um, and then at 23, I've gone with, again, someone who, on his current form, deserves to start, but there's just better options ahead of him, and that's Kyle Stein. Um, great finisher, great runner, solid defensively. I've heard people shout for him over Doohan. I wouldn't do that. I think you need Doohan. He's, he's too good of a finisher not to have in your team. I know, I know the defensive issues, but I just... I think I don't, I don't think you can miss Doohan around the middle, but I, I think his attacking just... Scotland need... The box will score. You cannot keep the box to nothing. The box will score. So Scotland need to score more. That's Scotland can't hold the box. They just need to score more than them. And I know this sounds kind of sh stupid, but... Scotland just need to score more than them. And I think they'll do better with that, with Doohan over Kyle Stain. But Kyle Stain on the bench, you know, just in case. And also I think he'd be good to cover. Because, you know, I know he can play centre. I wouldn't be surprised if he'd be alright at full-back for a bit as well. So he's decent cover for multiple positions towards the end of the game if there's tiredness, injury, whatever. Anyway, that's my team for Scotland. If you want me to try and predict any other team, let me know. Um, if you've enjoyed, subscribe, and until next time, I'll see you later. Can't wait for the World Cup. Come on, Scotland.